What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today I want to talk about a very, 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 very serious topic. Alright, and it's about pedophilia. Right? Pedophilia. The reason why I want to talk about pedophilia is because a lot of the, the right-wing Christian conservatives, what they do is they attach pedophilia to the LGBT community. Right? They attach pedophilia to the liberal community they they attach it so that every time you hear the word liberal your mind starts to think about pedophiles and of course pedophiles are repulsive so they use pedophilia to pedophilia to attach to the lgbt community because what they're saying is these people who are liberal in their sexual you know exploits also include uh you know children in their sexual choices right it's meant to, to to marry the two so that they're indistinguishable indistinguishable so anytime you think about a liberal group of people at all you're going to think about them being pedophiles and the point the republicans and the coons conservatives the point of them to do that is so every time a person every time a person sees or or somebody says they're liberal you automatically wants to attach pedophilia to them so so it post is supposed to make people afraid to identify as a liberal it's to it's supposed to make people afraid to identify with the democrats as well with the, they want to demonize a group by attaching things to it right and it's been pretty successful right you know in, in, in the blacks in, in the black community especially when black people start attaching words to other words right to ride on that word because you know we, we're very influential, so whenever we say something, people start copying this shit, right? But the reason why I want to talk about it, and this is, and people may say, oh, Afro Think Tank, you're supposed to be a Pan-African, but you support the LGBT community. Here's the thing. This is, I'm a realist, right? And here, in the real world, and I'm also a historian. I went to college to be a historian. I got a degree in history with a concentration in African studies, right? So when I be talking about this stuff, I'm not talking about stuff that make you feel good or or just to boost your, you know, boost your ego or whatever. I'd be talking about real stuff, right? That's true and objective, whether you like it or not, whether it's uncomfortable or not. And the truth is, the LGBT, the gay stuff has been around since humankind. They've been gay. And I know this is going to make a lot of you people uncomfortable, especially the Africans on the continent who want to pretend like it don't exist. But there have been gay people in Africa since the beginning of time. Right? Now, it's not part of the culture, per se, far as a prevalent part, but there have been gay people there. You know, the Greeks, they were, and the Romans, they were really into, they were really into it. Right? They were really into it, right? But there were situations in Africa where some societies, they participated in what we consider LGBT stuff, right? That's just the truth, right? So, throughout history... Every continent, every country, every group of people has had their people who, for one reason or another that we still can't explain, prefer, you know, the same sex. Now, that doesn't make them a bad person. That's a personal choice that they make within their own personal lives. And me, as a heterosexual straight man, I'm not threatened by that. Right? I'm not threatened by that. It's just they're going to be who they're going to be. Now, I ask those conservatives, those people who have such a visceral problem with it, what are you going to do about it? What do you want to do with all the gay people? What do you want to do with all the lesbians? What schools do you want them to go to? What cities do you want them to live in? What food do you want them to eat? Since they have such a... They concentrate on the LGBT community so much, right, that it questions... I started to question whether they are truly projecting their innermost desires... Because a lot of people do. A lot of people who concentrate on the LGBT community and they hate them and they always look for reasons to fight them. Truly, they're really fighting something deep inside of them. And that has been the case. I'm not taking no shots. That's a legitimate truth. All right. So when I see a lot of these black guys on the Internet, every video, they just somehow they're always talking about gay stuff. They're really focused in tunnel vision on it. And that seems to be the single issue that have them voting for Donald Trump. Because the gay stuff, it seems, is, is deeper than just politics, right? But back to pedophilia. I just want to remind you, right? All you people who try to use 
the Republicans as some kind of heterosexual, Christian, family-oriented, centered group of 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 people, right? Who th who 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 believe everything that's not white Christian evangelical is wrong and devilish and and all that and all that. I would like to ask you: Is the religious organizations in America are those conservative organizations? I think they are, right? We would. I think we can all safely put religion in the conservative category, right? We can put religion in the, in the you know family, you know in the sector of family and morals. We could put that. That's where it's supposed to be, right? But why is it that this group of people who are supposed to be representing family values, heterosexual, uh, natural, you know, you know, man and woman, which which I also subscribe to, man and woman, right? But I do know there are people who do different things. I just don't care, right? As long as you don't, and let me be clear, as long as you don't press that upon my children, I don't care, right? Now, if my child grows up, right, and I do the best I can, and all of a sudden they decide they want to be gay or lesbian, what am I going to do about it? <laughs> what can I do? That's how they feel. They're their own individuals. Nothing I can do. I'm going to beat them, disown them. I'm not going to do that. I'm a parent, right? Now, I don't, none of my children are, are like that, but I'm just saying, if they decided to be like that, what, what can I do? Am I going to not love them? You know, but what I really want to touch is that the majority of the pedophilia happens within the church. These straight Christian heterosexual organizations that are supposed to be the foundation for our morality at which we point at everybody else who do things different for, differently from what it is we do. The Catholic Church. An organization, the big one of the, the the biggest religious organizations and the orchestra, the, the orchestrators of most of the world's ills, all right, Muslim and Christian ills, the orchestrators, they have a institution of pedophiles, a global institution of pedophiles that do not get held accountable. They literally get caught having relations with boys consistently. This is not a bad apple. This is not one bad apple in an orchard. This is an entire bad orchard. Under the guise of Catholicism, Christianity, pedophilia is rampant. We're just talking about Catholic. We're, we're going to go, we're going to touch everybody. We're just talking about Catholic. Pedophiles everywhere, supposedly straight males, raping ultra boys. And they also, you know, they, they, they take advantage of uh, the nuns and stuff like that. All that on top of their pedophilia, which is their main dish, is pedophilia, right? Then they, you know, have side orders of actual women, you know, in, in you know, in other little, in a little, just, right? So that's one. The American Christian Church, both African American Christian Church and white American Christian churches, filled with pastors and preachers who are pedophiles. And have routinely, throughout the history of that religion in this country, have been pedophiles and taken advantage of young boys. Pedophiles. So it seems like the foundation for pedophilia is the Christian church, whether Catholic or another denomination of Christianity. How many reports do we have to hear about Altar boys, church boys, coming out, talking about what the pastor, the deacon done did. How many times have we seen a pastor talking on stage and some random individual come in and just trying to kill them? This is supposed to be a man of God, right? In the church, in the house of God. Yet someone in deems to kill them. What kind of energy was they putting up? But the black community likes to hide. We hide our pedophiles. Our uncles that touched our nieces and our daughters. We're known for hiding it because it's a shame on the family to even acknowledge that there's a pedophile in the family. We all know it. How many of our, how many, if, for all my, black, my brothers, how many women do you know used to, that when you got close to them, whether they're your girlfriend, your wife, how many of them told you that one of their family members touched them when they was a child? Pedophilia. They're supposedly straight, heterosexual, Christian family members. How many? But yet we try to equate this 
we try to attach pedophilia to the LGBT community. That's not that's not a good faith argument, especially with all the actual evidence in the real world, not just the rhetoric and the bullet points on 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 social media to get somebody to provoke certain feelings to attach because it's like spells. You're attaching pedophilia to the LGBT community. You're attaching it to them, unwarranted. When it's the straight heterosexual community that exacerbates pedophilia. How about the passport bros? Not the ones that, not the black passport bro fad that we see on YouTube. I'm talking about the passport bros before they was called the passport bros. The ones that used to go to Thailand. To go have sex with the little children in Thailand. Because that's what a lot of people do. They go to Thailand to go have sex with the underage Asian kids. Pedophilia happens all the time in Thailand. Happens in Philippines. Happens in the Dominican Republic. Happens in Cuba. A lot of these men from the West take their money. These Christian, straight, heterosexual men take their money to go to a country where they cannot be held accountable for their innermost desires. And they go to Thailand and they get lady boys. These are straight heterosexual men. They go get lady boys, right? Which are boy men dressed in, in dresses. They look like women. Asians pull it off the best because their women, their men look have an effeminate look already, so it's easy for them to convert over. Them white men. And them black men and all men is a different type of heterosexual men been going to Asia to have sex and exploit young children for years. Jeffrey Epstein, supposedly a straight heterosexual billionaire, along with all the straight heterosexual supposedly billionaires on the 1%. They had a whole goddamn island and an organization, an entire multi-billion dollar business. They had airports and planes and shit just to fly a rich well to do people to an island where they can't be held accountable for their innermost desires to have sex with children. This is just on the Christian side. Okay? The Christian heterosexual side. Sex, child sex trafficking is bigger than the transatlantic slave trade right now. Child sex trafficking in the world is bigger than the transatlantic slave trade right now. We got more children, black children, white children, Indian children, Asian children, European children right now, boys and girls being sexually exploited in little dens, little houses, little hostels all over Europe, mainly in Europe. That's the internet. That's the home of the of the pedo. Europe. All over the place. They make movies about it. It's so prevalent they make movies about it. They got movies about it that's so bad it can't even be shown in America. It's so graphic. But yet it's true. They drug up these young children, right? And they have their way with them. Old, crusty, nasty white men, just like Donald Trump. They spend all their money and they go have sex in little dirty rooms with children while they're hopped up on fentanyl and all sorts of other drugs. That's happening right now. Right now, it's happening right now. Heterosexual men uh, practicing pedophilia, sex tra trafficking, sex slavery. That's happening right now. That's on the Christian side. Let's talk about the Muslim side. Muslims, supposedly straight, heterosexual Islamists. They're about the gayest people I've ever met in my life. When I was in Afghanistan, all of them were gay. Every, every man who had money in Afghanistan had their own lady boy. What they do is they take the boy and they give him a donkey and they put makeup on him and they make him look pretty. It's the saddest shit I've ever seen in my life. This is not the Taliban. This is just the regular people. This is just regular. All right? This is regular shit. Boys exploited. If you can't grow a beard in Afghanistan, shit, you you you're a female. They hate women so much in Afghanistan. They're literally women are literally just used for procreation, and boys are used for pleasure because you can't get a boy pregnant. So you can do whatever you want, right? That's what it is. That's what I think it is. You don't, you don't not make an offspring. How many videos are there on the internet where these supposed imams in the madrasas getting a dick sucked by a goddamn by a little boy? Excuse my language. I've seen it. How many videos have you seen on the internet and on these madrasas where these imams and all the other people who support the imam are having open sex in these little rooms inside these supposed religious institutions with these forcing these boys who have no choice? I've seen it. Forcing boys to commit all sexual manners. Right? And somehow they justify it through some sort of mental gymnastics in their Quran 
or in their cultural practices. They justify it. They're not having sex. They're, they're doing something else, right? It's something else. It's called something else. Even though the eggplant's out and they're inserting it in, in, in a youth, in an innocent soul to pleasure their self. It is always some old, dirty, supposedly heterosexual man, whether Christian or Islam. And I'm positive this goes for every other organized religious organization because there seems to be a pattern within the straight heterosexual conservative section of society. These people who tout conserving something so much that I guess like a soda can, it just bursts and they got to go let it out somewhere, right? Then they come back and pretend like everything's straight. So with all the mountains and mountains and mountains of vast evidence of all, most of all the pedophilia happening within the heterosexual Christian and Islamic traditional religions and houses and organizations that's been blasted international all over the world. Everybody knows it's happening in every one of these so-called up and coming Middle Eastern countries where sex trafficking and slavery is the operation of the day. It's, on, it's the only reason why some of these United Arab Emirates is even in operation because of slavery, domestic slavery, sexual slavery, industrial slavery. Y'all want to conveniently forget all these things because guess what? It conveniences you. It's happening in China. It happens in Japan. Japanese men are notorious for sex, for, for, for pedophilia. And in their societies, a woman can't even talk about them. You think they're all nice and polite and shit, and they all coofed and well put together. But what you don't know behind all that is that behind the closed doors, men are having sex with their daughters at a at an insane rate. It, it shouldn't be any rate at all, but men are raping their daughters on a regular basis in Japan. It's part of the culture. They do it and dare you to say something. That's why there's so many young women who ran away from their homes because their mama's not going to say nothing. And they're on the streets selling themselves in, in the middle of in, in Tokyo right now. Same thing in China. India. Same thing in India. Men, because of fantasy, ain't no goddamn women, ain't even enough women in India. Got a bunch of men when they can't find another man to have sex with. Because they have whole holidays where men who are supposedly heterosexual go and they go have sex, go to a village where there's a bunch of lady boys, right, who are ostracized throughout the whole year. But during this time, they are they are celebrated. And they go into their little huts in, in the fucking jungle. And these straight heterosexual men go have sex with these lady boys and young children in India. India, Indian men rape young girls whenever they see them almost. So bad that women can't even be out past 7 o'clock in India. Because they have the risk of being raped, gang raped. By a bunch of men that have no women available, have, don't have access to women. And all these are supposed to be straight heterosexual people who are doing all these things to children when they're not doing it to ladyboys. And this is all in the heterosexual, this is the conservative Indians, this is the conservative Muslims, and this is the conservative Christians. All these religions and these groups. So you tell me, how is it with all that being said... How are we attaching pedophilia to the LGBT community? What evidence do you have that the LGBT community is promoting pedophilia when we have evidence that the straight heterosexual community participates in pedophilia at a psychic rate, at a ridiculous rate? What evidence do we have to attach pedophilia to a single to that group when we can easily attach it to the heterosexual group? That's why I say these people, they, 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 they're not honest. They're telling, they're telling half-truths. Now, the reason why a lot of these straight people try to attach uh, pedophilia to the, to the, to the um, LGBT community is because of the bathroom issue. Now, I myself don't want no man. Now, let's be clear. I don't want no man going to the bathroom with my daughter. So I'm in agreement agreeance with that. If you were born a man... You go to the bat man bathroom. You're born a woman. You go to the woman bathroom. Period. But if it's that big an issue, maybe they should have their own goddamn bathroom. How about that? They got enough money anyway. The LGBT community got enough money to make a third bathroom for the third people. I mean, they can do that, right? That's a compromise, right? Everybody can have their own damn bathroom. But other than that, oh yeah, oh yeah. Also, the that I do find it to be weird. I'm not gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Apparently, 
there are groups of drag drag show drag queens or drag groups reading books to people in school i've seen it a couple of times now i i find that to be weird but it's happening in it, it happens in in the white neighborhoods that's that's the white where you know they do weird come on man you know they do weird stuff right now what i've what i've learned is those are requested by the parents and they are also for, for the most part, they're questioned, questioned by the parents or, you know, it's, it's organized, right? And it's a volunteer basis, right, apparently. So whatever parent wants to bring their kids, maybe they want to show them. Because a lot of these people, where it's happening, they live in they live in parts of America that's not exposed to big cities and all the various dif different diversities of life. So maybe in these super conservative, single-minded towns in America, they're trying to show them that, hey, there are people out here that do this. And you need to be exposed to this at a young age so you don't be shocked when you get older. Maybe that's the rationale. I don't know. I think it's weird. I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't have any. I wouldn't have any drag queens reading my children any books. But you know, I understand that. But outside of that, and then the books in a school, right? I think that was another one. Weird books in libraries. Now I'm willing to bet there's a lot of weird books in the libraries. I've never personally heard in my black community in the DMV of any gay promoting book in any children's library so i'm thinking that's probably an anomaly that happens very few and far between and still in those areas somewhere out there but utilizing that same standard the bible is in the library the bible is a book of pedophilia homosexuality murder violence betrayal magic contradictions rape uh, incest, we got all that stuff in the Bible. So if we're gonna use the same standard, you know, especially since this country's supposed to be, uh, this country is not supposed to be a Christian nation, even though there are groups who want to make it a Christian nation. You know, that's a book that's in the in the library. That book is more offensive. That that book offends more people than the few books that was found in some of these other places, right? So I'm just saying, what standard are we using here? So I, I'm just saying, I'm just. I'm just saying, man, you, we, we can't be stupid no more. There was a time where, you know, do you know that stupid people are the most dangerous people on the planet? Stupid people are dangerous because they hurt themselves and they hurt others and they don't realize it. Stupid people are dangerous because they don't realize they're stupid. Stupid people are dangerous because they, they think they're the smartest person in the room. They think they're know-it-alls. Know-it-all, they, they, they come off as know-it-alls. And a lot of stupid people are narcissistic, right? And some charismatic stupid people galvanize other stupid people who are not charismatic. And then you just have a big group of stupid people who are who create echo chambers of idiots spreading dangerous information to the masses who don't know. Right? That's why stupid people are, are dangerous. And in the age of information, it's time to flex your brain. It used to be a time where you would go and go to the gym. And you'll work out so you can go out and flex and see how good of a shape you are. Like, yeah, I got muscles. Why don't you get in the gym, fat boy? Right? We need to start doing the same things for our brains. Start letting these intellectually out of shape people come out here and flexing their skinny muscles. Their skinny brain muscles. It's time for us black people. It's time for people in general. Not just black people. It's time for people in general to start exercising their brains. Making it stronger. Making it work effectively. And come outside and start flexing their brain muscles. And start telling those other people that got them them weak brain muscles to go back to the mental gym. Because they're not about that life. They're not ready for this. They're weight classes in this intellectual game. Because if you want to survive in this world, you got to be smart. You got to be able to adapt. You got to understand your surroundings so you know how to move. The fewer moves to get to where you want to go. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be making a bunch of unnecessary moves. You don't want to be pointed in the wrong direction. You don't want misinformation to reprogram you again the wrong direction. We've already been... We already been programmed incorrectly. We're trying to deprogram ourselves. So what we need to do is reprogram ourselves and get all the, the, the useless information out, right? We have to stop letting people tell us what to think. We have to start be, stop being tools to the white power systems that use us as the tools to defeat their enemies. Do you understand what I'm saying, right? We have to be smarter. Black people, we are geniuses, you understand? We are all geniuses. But some of us are not activating our genius 
in our head. We're being lazy because we think we know it all. If you think you know it all, you'll never learn anything else. A wise man knows he doesn't know anything. A dumb man thinks he knows everything. Anyway, you guys tell me what you think about this comment section. Do you are you following me? Do you get my logic? I'm not defending. I am, well, no, I guess I am defending the LGBT community as a straight heterosexual man because they're humans too. They're human beings that live too. They're human beings that 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 uh, that contribute to societies in ways. Some of them contribute to societies in ways that none of us can understand. Some of the people who are part of the LGBT communities are, are the most outspoken individuals when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, the suffering of the people. Some of them are, right? Just like some of them are the worst type of people. Some of the L did you know that there's a? I'm not even gonna tell you his name because this how this how bad it is. Do you know that some of the top billionaires in the world LGBT community are financing and promoting? Uh, the right wing Christian conservative values, and right, even though they're gay themselves, because it doesn't affect them. What, what they, what the politicians do, don't affect rich people, because rich people have a bubble, a financial bubble, so they don't have to worry about the legislation that's passed to affect. They don't care. Those rich billionaire gay people don't care about the poor gay people. Keep in mind, all right? <laughs> they don't care, right? And they own a lot of them. Own a lot of them own a lot of the networks that you watch. Did you know there's one person that owns both? If you go high enough, they own both. I think it's uh, Fox and MSNBC, or is it CNN or MSNBC? Either way, there's a billionaire who owns the most liberal network and one of the most conservative networks because he knows there's money to be made in both, right? So when you guys figure out who's trying to divide who for, for what, because it's all about the money at the end of the day, right? You'll figure out what's really happening. You'll stop falling for all the political theater that divides us and wastes our time and unjustly attach labels to people who don't deserve it while not even while not labeling the ones that deserve the label like the church the progenitor of of pedophilia like the like the eat like the like islam like the madrasas who promote and practice homosexuality and pedophilia regularly Everywhere they are. And it's not a religious person who, who could tell me I'm wrong. Not one. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comment section. This is Afro Think Tank. Learn something, teach something. I'm out.